to worship our fabulous and faithful God today. So it's great that you could be with us. Why don't we use our usual welcome? This is the new day that God has made and for life and for breath, we say thank you, God. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for one another as we gather for worship. Lord, from our homes, from wherever we're watching today. And we thank you for your promise that when we draw near to you, you will draw near to us, so come by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Come and breathe fresh life, fresh hope into us today as we gather to worship you, to seek your face, to listen to your word. You are welcome here, Lord. Amen. All creation gives you praise You alone are truly great God in the So we're going to use these words, and why don't you join in with the, the words that are up on the screen and with the responses too. So God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, let us worship. From the rising of the sun all the way to its setting, the Lord's name is greatly to be praised. So give him praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. So, Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and a living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Who am I that the highest
all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been
Jesus You wipe away all tears You mend the broken heart You're the answer to it all Jesus You wipe away all tears You mend the broken heart You're the answer to to our first reading it comes from mark's gospel and penny is going to read it for us thanks penny then jesus entered the house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat when his family heard about this they went to take charge of him for they said he is out of his mind and the teachers of the law who came down from jerusalem said he is possessed by beelzebub by the prince of demons he is driving out demons so Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes him and is divided, he cannot stand. His end does come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off its possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he has an evil spirit. Then Jesus, his mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and mother? Who are my mother and my brother, he asked. And then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God will will be my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I call that prayer for today. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now one of our parish church wardens from St Mary's, Brian, is going to bring us our second reading. Thanks, Brian. I'm reading from 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 13. It is written, I believe, therefore, I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe, and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised 
the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reached, reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieved for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on not what is seen, but on what is not unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Now we know that if the earthly tent is lived in, is destroyed, we are building from God an eternal house in heaven, but not built by human hands. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I'll hand over to Emma, who's going to lead us in a song with a bit of action today. Thanks for that, Em. That's got the um, the blood circulating, and we need it as well because it's Rev Malk today. So let's pray for Rev Malk. Father, thank you for all that Rev Malk has prepared for today. Thank you for what you've put on his heart, and we pray that um, we'd have open ears and soft hearts, that we'd hear something from you through him today. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thanks, Malk. Uh, good morning. Uh, really good to be with you this morning. I pray you're well. Looking forward to um, yeah talking and well looking at God's word together. That's um, that always excites me. So can I just say this morning we're going to be concentrating on the gospel reading from Mark. It's Mark chapter three and it's verses twenty to thirty-five. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So if you've got a Bible, 
um, or you want to hand, nip and get it, open your Bible up, Mark chapter 3, verses 20 to 35. Um, I love big rides, okay, kind of, you know, the bigger the roller coaster, the steeper the drop, the, the more upside down turns, the better. Love them, absolutely love them. But there's one thing about rides that I really don't like, um, which caused me a bit of panic, if I'm honest with you. It's when you have to be strapped in. Do you know what I mean? Um, the shoulder bars are the things that are really constant. And the shoulder bars come down and they kind of lock in place. And it's claustrophobic. Um, no room to move. To be honest, you can barely breathe sometimes. No matter how much you struggle or push, they will not budge. You're going nowhere. I guess that's a good thing if you're kind of doing loop the loops at 100 miles an hour. Um I think what it is I hate about the bars is how it takes my freedom um, to get up, uh, to move. It takes it away. I'm, I'm at the mercy of somebody else. I suppose it's the person who presses the button to release the bars at the end of the ride. I'm like a prisoner. And not no matter what I do, I can't get away. This morning's um, reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 3 has a lot going on in it, to be honest. Uh, and I just want to take a look through it and pull out the good news which we read. And there is so much to go at, let me tell you. So in my NIV Bible, um, this section of scripture is titled, Jesus Accused by His Family and the Teachers of the Law. All right, let's have a think about it. So the teachers of the law accuse Jesus of being demon-possessed. Um, not because he's going around causing chaos or harming himself like, you know, the demons possessed man we read of in chapter five um, of, of Mark. Um, this bloke would, well, we read, he cuts himself. Um, he'd cry out. Um, it was impossible to control him, we're told. He couldn't chain him down because of this supernatural strength that these demons, these impure spirits give him. They are accusing Jesus, these teachers of the law, because he's driving out demons. He's doing good. And if you look at chapter 1 of Mark, verse 21 to 28, the import pure spirits have no power over Jesus. He, he commands them to, to, um, to keep quiet and to come out of the man. And they do because of who Jesus is and the authority he has. Mark 1, chapter, um, yeah, Mark chapter 1, verses 25 to 26. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirits shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people who witness this um, are amazed. And we're told in Mark chapter 1, verse 28, news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Jesus, you see, is drawing attention to himself and people are coming to see who this man is. Jesus is attracting crowds of people and it's this which I think is troubling the teachers of the law. They probably feel threatened by Jesus and what if he becomes more popular than us? I imagine they're thinking. This troublemaker and um, this maverick who's not doing things as we do them. He even healed on the Sabbath, for goodness sake. How dare he? And he lets his disciples, his followers, gather corn and eat it too on the Sabbath. If you read the end of um, chapter 2 and the start of chapter 3, you can read about this. I can just see um, Jesus looking at these teachers of the law and thinking, are you real? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Are you really that stupid? And he shows them up and it points out their ridiculous conclusions that they've come to. They say that Jesus is possessed by Beelzebul, the devil, okay? In verse 22, and the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebul. By the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. And Jesus says, he responds, verses 23 to 26. How can Satan drive out Satan? 
If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. The teachers of the law are suggesting basically that civil war is taking place within Satan himself. They are suggesting he's fighting against himself. It's ridiculous. Jesus goes on to share actually what's really happening. And let me tell you, this is awesome news. OK, listen up to this. It's awesome news because Satan isn't fighting against himself. He is still prowling and causing chaos, looking for people to devour. 1 Peter 5, 8. But Jesus says this. Now let's think about what this means. OK, verse 27. No one can enter a strong man's house without first tying him up. Jesus is speaking of his victory over the devil. The devil is the strong man that's been tied up. Jesus has tied the devil up. The devil is strapped in. The bars are over the shoulder. He can't escape. The bars are down and he has no hope. That is good news. But I tell you something, it gets even better. Verse 27 ends with these words. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. This is awesome. It's absolutely awesome. This is such good news. These words are full of hope and offer life to those who believe they are beyond help. Those the world have written off. Those who have written themselves off. These words tell us that the devil has lost. He is defeated, beaten and helpless against Jesus. And Jesus is saying those who the devil possessed before can now go free. Then he can plunder the strong man's house. He can go and take what was once his and take it back. Jesus offers freedom salvation he offers adoption acceptance back into the family of God he gained that for us through paying the price for all our sin on the cross the devil can't accuse us of sin and separate us from God with his lies any longer because Jesus paid the price for all our sins and he offers all people all people who come to him are free from the devil free from death Freed from sin, we're forgiven. Verse 28, take a look at verse 28. Truly, I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. Come on. <laughs> what awesome news. What beautiful truth that is. Jesus goes on to say something here, actually, which I find a bit disturbing. When he continues and says to the teachers of the law in the next verse, verse 29, he says this. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin, a forever sin. Can I be honest with you? That terrifies me because I start thinking, have I or could I blaspheme against the Holy Spirit? Have I? I mean, in fact, not have I. I have sworn. I have cursed and got angry at God. Is all that good news we've just heard and read about, about forgiveness, is that evaporating away? But then I remember what we read in the Bible about some of the great apostles and what they did and how they acted and how they are saved. You see, if Peter, who cursed and swore he didn't know Jesus, can be the rock Jesus builds his church on, maybe, just maybe, I stand a chance. Or Saul, who becomes Paul, who tried to force the early Christians to blaspheme. If he can be the man who takes the word of God into Europe and preaches Christ in Rome and builds Christ's church, maybe I stand a chance. The truth is, and this is important, try and understand this. The truth is, if we're questioning if we might be guilty of this ultimate sin, 
it's a clear sign that we aren't. Think about it. Because in our questioning, we're recognising that God is who he says he is. We're showing we believe Jesus to be the son of God. We fear God. We love God. Jesus says this about the teachers, that they've committed this ultimate sin. Because they refuse, they deliberately close their heart and mind to the witness of the Spirit in Jesus. Instead, they accuse him of being possessed by Beelzebub, the devil. This means they can't or won't repent, turn back to Jesus. And that means it's impossible for them to have salvation, to be saved. And I think this is important because I know so many people, I speak to people regularly who are sure God hates them and could never forgive them. And it weighs them down. We can tell these people, and I'm telling you now, that your guilt and fear prove you are saved. You know and recognise there's a God. And I pray, my prayer, is if you're watching this now and you are that person, you are those people, I pray you are free, freed from that fear and guilt now. Don't believe me, in fact. Believe Jesus. He says so. Remember verse 28? Remember what he says? Truly, truly, truly I tell you, people can be forgiven and their sins and every slander they utter. Truly I tell you, people can be forgiven all their sins and every slander they utter. Truly you can be forgiven. That's what Jesus came and died for. Jesus wants you to be free. This is the beautiful truth. To have life and have it to the fullest. John, John, John 10, 10, mega famous verse, okay? The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I, that's Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Remember, the thief, the devil, the enemy, the deceiver is tied up, strapped in. He's lost. The only power he has is what we give him. Turn to and trust Jesus. Repent and be saved. I want to end um, by just pointing out a beautiful truth. And it's lovely. It really is. Even Jesus's family think he's mad. And they don't believe who he is yet. Verse 21. When his family heard about this, heard that he's out and about, creating these crowds they went to take charge of him <laughs> for they said he's out of his mind can i say i i don't believe they are guilty like the teachers of the law i think they're worried about jesus and about themselves actually mary's son their brother is making a fool of himself and them i suppose and attracting enemies to himself and to them he's nuts out of his mind they're not deliberately denying God. They just don't see yet. How Jesus responds to the news his mother and brothers are outside is shocking in one sense, but actually beautiful in another. You see, to not stop teaching and go out to see his mum goes against the fifth commandment regarding honouring your father and your mother. But what Jesus shows is that the priorities of God's kingdom are different. Whoever does God's will is closer to him than any of his blood relatives. Now, I think it's important that you understand this doesn't mean it's okay to neglect family. That's not what Jesus is saying. Remember, Jesus's family don't believe in him at this point. They've come to take him away. Even Mary must have her doubts. Otherwise, she wouldn't be outside trying to get Jesus to come home, would she? When Jesus is sat there and he looks around at those sat listening to him teaching and he says in verses 34 to 35, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. He's saying that whoever does God's will is in my family. They 
have heard and they do God's will. And I think that's really important to note, actually. These people he's talking about are not just listening and agreeing. They are doing God's will. Really important, I think. They are followers and not just fans of Jesus. And I love this that we've just read about, what Jesus says, what he says to his, his mother and his brothers, what he says and speaks to those listening to him, listening to his teaching. I love it because it shows us that our brothers and sisters in Christ truly are family. Our church is family. I love that. And Jesus says that's true and it's right. And you know what? Better still, it means that Jesus is our brother and God is our father. What good news. That not only has Jesus saved us, not only does he offer forgiveness, but he has brought us into his family. We are children of God. We are not alone. I mean, a couple of weeks back at Pentecost, we were reassured, aren't we, of God's presence being with us. The flames, the fire over the heads of the disciples, like the fire that hovered over the tabernacle, the portable temple, to say that God was there, he's present, he's present in us. That awesome news, what beautiful truth. Thank you, Jesus. Remember what we thought about today. The devil is tied up. He can't escape the bars holding him. Jesus is victorious and we share in that victory when we accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour or using the churchy word when we repent and are saved. If you want what Jesus offers, turn to him today. Give your life to him today and start living let me pray for us. Father God, we just praise you, Lord, and we love you so much, Father. And Lord, I just want to give thanks. We give thanks to Jesus for all that he did. We thank you, Father, that he came and he defeated evil. He tied the devil up and he set the captives free, literally. Those people who were possessed by the devil were set free. It was the, it, What was true then is true today. Jesus offers all people freedom from sin. He offers all people salvation if they will turn and put their trust and faith in him. If they become doers of his word. Thank you, Father. Thank you that Jesus is our brother. Thank you that God is our father. Thank you that the Holy Spirit of God dwells in us, is with us, is present with us. Thank you, Lord, that we have family, that you've given us church that you've given us family, that we can come together, we can support and love one another, and that that's good and it's right. Father, we praise you. Lord, our prayer is that more people come to know this glorious, beautiful truth and good news of the gospel, and more people turn and accept you as their Lord and Saviour. Father, we pray, build your kingdom here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, everybody, and God bless. Have a cracking day. Draw. So let's just take a few moments to just let those words sink in. Let's just have a few moments quiet. And let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for your word to us today. We pray that your words might make a difference in our hearts and then overflow through our choices and our very lives. Lord, we thank you for one another, for everyone that is watching today. And Lord, we pray that we might see more of you at work in us 
and through us, Lord, out in our community, in the streets where we live, across our city. Lord, we pray for more of you and less of us, God. Come by your Holy Spirit and do something fresh amongst us, we pray. And Lord, we pray for all those that are struggling at the moment, people who are struggling in their bodies, people who are struggling with old age, people who are struggling still with isolation. Lord, people that are struggling in their mental health, in their well-being. And maybe there's someone that's particularly important to you that you might just want to lift up before God today. And Lord, as we remember these people before you, we pray that God, you would, you would meet them in their point of need right now. Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, would you lift them up? Would you heal and restore them? And we pray these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. And let's bring our prayers together as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come on, let's worship God again together. It's been great to be together today and God bless you in all that you were doing this day and throughout this week. So some final words of prayer. So may God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side and guide you in truth and peace. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. We continue our day in peace as we love and we serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. God bless you. For your end.